Uh, I'm Matt Clay. I'm uh, currently Chief Science Officer at Singularity Net Foundation. And right now, uh, I'm at the wonderful uh, Beneficial General Intelligence event, BGI 24, in beautiful Panama City, Panama. So that, that's an important question. Uh, it's a difficult question um, as there is no single uh, consensus theory on what consciousness is uh, in the first place. Though there are a number of ideas, uh, a number of theories. Uh, there was a recent paper. Uh, it was kind of a, a group paper, 19 researchers um, across the AI um, landscape uh, from quite different perspectives uh, and, and consciousness landscape uh, fields. And uh, there were a number of ideas. Uh, basically, the, the idea there is that let's take a look at uh, the theories of consciousness, and let's take a look at what is being done in AI systems, and what are the sorts of ideas from consciousness, the current theories, that can be aligned uh, with, with current AI and AGI systems. And these span the gamut uh, from um, BARS, Global Workspace, uh, theory, for example, uh, and I can't recall all of the different ideas, but there's all these different components, and it's probably going to be, at least at some short-term time frame, it's going to be a, a, um, a multi-factor multi, uh, measure. It's not going to be just one single measure that says, oh, this is consciousness. Uh, you're going to take all these different uh, measures, metrics, try to understand uh, how they fit together. And a lot of these are coming from uh, research in, uh, in neuroscience uh, and anesthesiology studies, you know, what happens when people uh, go under anesthesia. Um, there's quite a bit coming out, but at present, uh, there's not really anything in particular. Um, so I have my own ideas, um, but you know, I'm not. I'm in the AGI field. I'm not a consciousness researcher, uh, but I'm trying to understand these as best I can. <laughs> So that's a, another interesting and hard question. And I would say it kind of misses the point, except for the last part. It's not that any one Lego piece uh, of the AI system is what's important. It's, it's how, it is really how these different pieces, uh, if, you, if you try to reflect on us as, as, as humans, we're intellectual creatures, we're emotional creatures. It's not any single aspect that provides uh, the, the life uh, of our existence. It's, I, I would argue that it's more how do you, all of these different components and their unique characteristics combine together. Uh, it becomes this, I mean, Ben coined the term cognitive synergy. Okay, how do, how does, how do logic un inference systems and uh, work with evolutionary algorithms 
for example, uh, and memory systems. So it's, it's, I would argue, it's, it's like, um, uh, I'm, the, the word's escaping me, a um, the swarm intelligence, but um, I'm tr- I was trying to think of, of, of starlings, what the, the grouping name is, but uh, uh, it escapes me at the moment. But if you watch the flight, it's, it becomes this synergy, there's this intelligence, and, and there's it's this beauty in, in their uh, group flight. Well, I would argue that that relates back to the last question, which is this whole interoperability um, that it's it's how the systems are being designed to work together with each other rather than this is a single algorithm that's going to rule AI. Uh, it's more how do these unique and differentiated algorithms and ideas come together and to to really create something that is a, a, a larger whole that is much, much, much more than just the sum of its constituent parts. Uh, and, and that it's, it's how all of these systems work together. And, I, and, I, and I, I, I'm wholeheartedly behind that, that idea. So those are two separate questions. Um, so regarding fairness, transparency, uh, uh, the more that we're able to encourage um, different types of algorithms, different types of services coming from different communities, from different cultures, and having services that uh, a number of support services. I, historically, there's a lot of data that has been biased just in terms of a mission of, of different um, groups. So, so the more you have, the more types of and diverse types of services. So, for example, you can have support services, data support services, um, that that their job is to. I'm not going to say cleanse data because I'm not sure that that's ever really possible. But to, for example, say, look, this data appears to be biased, and here's why. Um, because maybe it was the, the, the group that was studied was just a specific um, subpopulation. That, not to say that, that, that that's a bad thing, but just to make, I, I, it's more, the more awareness of, of these facets that people uh, become so that individuals, as they're looking at services to use, can make their own um, decisions based on, okay, this, these support services can say, hey, look, this particular algorithm or this particular approach or this particular data uh, is biased in this particular directions, um, and and here's how we are why we're saying that. Um, that that provides some transparency, some openness. Uh, it's it's much like um, it, the 
the other thing that, that always comes to mind is also trying to foster a, an environment uh, of creators where creators can, can engage with each other uh, in, without retribution. You know, they, they're going to be feel free to say, hey, look, I think this, what, what we're doing here is that we're creating uh, AGI. Um, and that's, that's one of the things that I like about Singularity there, Nat. There is a very open atmosphere. Um, people should be encouraged to speak out and say, look, I have a problem with what we're doing over here. Not th that doesn't mean that we're going to stop it. Um, but it's just an awareness. Um, and it may, it, may, it may end up changing directions. It may not. Uh, that's what I'm getting at. But the more freedom and openness that individual creators have to express their opinions one way or the other, again, without feeling outcast or, or something like that. It's, it's, there is a need in any organization, I think, to foster that. And I, as an example of that, I would argue is the Boeing 737 MAX series of ongoing um, d uh, problems. Um, and that was due to particular uh, push to get something out really quickly. But there was also, you couldn't, there was a, an atmosphere where people did not feel comfortable speaking out about the problems. Or if they did, they were not being recognized. And so I think that there are lessons to learn there, but I think in a larger picture, this is fostering, um, and, and that's where community and transparency really fits in uh, as, as to guide Singularity Net, for example. So where we are right now, uh, and I think that we put it fairly, I hope, fairly clear, clearly in, in the, um, the, the progress report for, for this past year, is we're still in, in the process of building some of the foundational elements. Uh, right now, I think we have a, a pretty good conceptual picture where we want to go. There's a lot of details to be worked out still, especially in, more in the in, internals, not the big picture of these are the pieces we need and they all need to fit together. Uh, I mean, we're laying the foundation with the meta language, which is a very incredibly flexible language uh, able to rewrite its own code, for example. And the distributed atom space. And all of this is built to take, essentially, the, the open cog framework to the next level. Uh, what's needed is something analogous to the um, tech infrastructure that has been built uh, around uh, classic AI and, and with the whole GPU and distributed uh, server farms uh, through MapReduce and, and, and so forth. But there's this tech infrastructure. But in the more, uh, in the case of artificial general intelligence and beyond, um, some of the algorithms are not as amenable to that sort of tech infrastructure. And so a new tech infrastructure, a bit different, aimed at the particular algorithms that, that we have developed and are continue to develop, needs, we need that in place to provide that same sort of scalability uh, 
across multiple systems, multiple types of systems. I mean, that's why HyperCycle is, is being developed for one example, and NuNet. Uh, these are also going to be facilitating technologies to take what we, we've already arguably demonstrated some of the properties that we want in classic OpenCog, emergence. Um, there's a whole series of studies coming back to the first question uh, you asked uh, that um, working with uh, David Hansen of Hansen Robotics uh, about Sophia's intelligence that is aimed at creating conscious, sentient Sophia. Uh, we had tantalizing results from some of our experiments in uh, classic open cog related to, to some um, experiments, but they're one-off experiments. Uh, and with the new infrastructure, we'll have the ability to really say, look, we need a whole set of experiments, uh, not just here's an example, it looks promising, but statistically there's nothing there, right? So by laying this foundation with Meta, the whole Hyperon Foundation with the distributed atom space, we're porting all the algorithms that we already had previously developed we're porting those over to Hyperon. The, the really, and, and my background is complex systems, so, and that's this whole idea of how do all of these pieces come together. Um, one of the things I'm really excited about playing with and exploring and trying to experiment and see if, where this goes is some recent research uh, with human subjects with their EEG over a period of an entire week. And it seemed the, the results were fascinating, but to me, they've, they fit with exactly the kind of system that we're building. Um, they demonstrated that the EEG patterns seem to be in semi-stable, not, not completely replicating, but almost replicating um, patterns for extended periods of time. And then they would go into uh, another state of chaos. And then after some period of time, it would go into a different semi-stable state. And to me, this just screams complex dynamic systems, strange attractors, uh, and it, it just seems like the, this neural activity is, is, is tied to uh, the, 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 these strange attractors, and that's the kind of patterns I want to start seeing as we start putting all these pieces uh, together. And it, and it fits in with a number of the, the theories of consciousness uh, that we the, uh, discussed at the, at the very beginning. Because um, if we can get our system to be on these particular edge of chaos, that's exciting. Because life seems to like not chaos, not pure order, but kind of right on the edge between, between the two.